Right, let's have a look and get an update for the video. So there's our state of charge. 99%, great, let's look at the history. Wow, three quarters of a megawatt hour of charged energy, nice. Oh, hello, and welcome to the place where energy matters. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a breakdown on how I've got on with my DIY shopping cart battery build. So following on from my original 12 volt MPP solar inverter build, which is currently being suggested in the top corner, I wanted to go on for the 24 volt version and see how I got on with that. So I had this concept in my head using a collapsible shopping cart, the ones that you can get on Amazon. So I got hold of the cells, the BMS, and then I built the battery out from there. So when the batteries arrived, and I'm just putting something on screen at the moment, they were actually in tip top condition. So I knew the first part of the journey to build the battery was in good shape. So there was much relief when I put the cells in the cart for the first time and they fit perfectly. The only other issue I had to get around was the fact that the bus bars that came with the cells wouldn't work in the configuration I needed. But you'll see that in the upcoming section where I break down the battery and give you a tour. So the original build of this battery was completed around mid-Feb 2022. Obviously I've made some changes and some tweaks since then. And one of the lessons I have learned is make sure that your balance leads are correctly connected to ring terminals. Because I was getting some really crazy voltage regions, so I made sure that I recrimped them to make sure that they were as tight as they could be. Because they throw things off quite a lot and they give you some really silly readings and obviously make it look like the battery is actually not operating correctly. So the Victron Smart Shunt that I added as part of my tweaking wasn't actually purchased until around mid April 2022. So there's at least a couple of months there that wouldn't have contributed to that three quarters of a megawatt hour I referenced at the start of this video. So that just needs to be taken into account that it could have actually been a little bit more, maybe not too much in the winter months, but again, it's more that would have been added to that overall figure. Anyway, enough chat, let's see how it's put together. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna share how much energy it saved me off the grid and something else that I've been able to do with it as well. Right, so I've removed all the batteries from the box, as you can see, so it's easier to look round inside. I've also removed the uh, balance cable as well, because obviously that's going to get in the way when I show you round. So starting off here with the most obvious thing, which is the uh, DALI BMS, and I've bolted that to the side of the, or the front, if you like, of the box itself. So down here we've got the smart shunt here, the Victron smart shunt. So what I've done is I've actually bolted that to the wood I've got on the floor. And the reason I've used wood on this is when I first made this battery up, what I noticed was the bottom was bowing because it's about 40 plus kilos worth of batteries. So I had to reinforce, I've just got some old pallet wood there that I've used to reinforce the base. So that's connected up there. I've run a lead all the way round, which goes to one of the terminals here. So that's the negative terminal. And I bought these uh, terminals here online as well. They've been really good, really solid. And over here is the positive uh, terminal, which obviously goes to the positive terminal of the battery. So on here we've got a couple of leads. So this is the first lead here, and this is for the um, Bluetooth module. So this means that this is a smart BMS, so I can actually look at things remotely. And here we've got a little, if I get that in focus, We've got a little temperature sensor there. So a quick look underneath now, and as you can see, they're the bolts that I've used to secure the pallet wood to obviously reinforce the base. So that stops this uh, under part, because obviously this is a collapsible shopping cart, so it stops that bottom bowing with all the weight. Right, quick look around the front now, so you can see the bolts there, which I've used to secure the BMS inside. And there are a few holes in there where I've repositioned it before. I've also used another BMS just to test it out on here. So if the BMS ever does fail, then it's easy to swap out and I can actually use the batteries as normal. So one of the terminals here, it's got these little terminal covers on that you just slip off like that. Nice substantial bolt for the uh, type of gauge that I'm using for this particular setup. So they just slide back over when you've got the cable on and there you have it. So I've obviously got two of those and they've been pretty good terminals to be fair. And then you can see the little front wheels on there which are, make it steerable though it's quite heavy. And then on the back here, we've got these quite substantial wheels here, which enable you to go upstairs. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't do that with this because it's just too heavy. Okay, let's get the batteries reloaded.
done. So let's get them reconnected. So I'm going to be using these flexible bus bars I made up specifically for this setup that I've got here. Um, I didn't really want to use the metal ones because they were a little bit more tricky to get in line, obviously, because the battery is split in two halves. But if you want to find out how I make these cables up, I'm suggesting a video in the top corner right now. So the cell numbers are ordered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So as you can see, I've set the first one up now. So I'm going uh, positive to negative and then I'm connecting them all in series to make up the 24 volt battery. So I've got the uh, first balance lead here, which I've already marked up, as you can see. I might not be able to see that. It's got a one on it. And that means I've got to connect the red cable to the positive of the cell one. So I'm going to go through the rest of them now. So before I connect up the last balance lead and actually get the main terminals connected for the battery, just going to quickly check what voltage we've got to make sure we've got a 24 volt battery in the making. And there we have it, 26.7. So that's the negative terminal of the battery sorted. So we've got the lead that comes from the BMS here and also the balance lead as well. So that's now connected up. So I'm gonna move on to the positive. So final connection done now. So that's the positive. We've got the positive that runs to the positive terminal right up here. We've got the positive balance lead. And this other lead here is one that just goes off to the Victron Smart Shunt is what it needs to operate. So that's the positive terminal done. I've checked all of the uh, terminals are tight. So I'm gonna go and plug this in in a minute. So the final job to do before plugging in the balance lead and activating the BMS is just to put the temperature sensor in some cells. So I've got a little gap here between these four cells at the front. So I've just posted that in there. So that will give me an idea and give the uh, protection features on the BMS a chance to kick off if the temperature goes above or below the threshold. Nervous excitement time now. So I've rechecked all of the leads down to the plug and they're all on the right cells. So let's just plug that back into the BMS and see if we can activate it or reactivate it, I should say. All right, that's clicked in now. So I'm just gonna go over to my app and find out if it's working or not. So I've opened the app up on my phone, as you can see, and it's already detected it, obviously, because I use this already on this uh, particular phone. So I'm gonna click on there and that gives us a bit more information about it. So there you have it, overall uh, voltage, we've got remaining capacity, so this is a 200 uh, amp hour 24 volt battery. Uh, as you can see on there it's got max, uh, min and average volts and the difference is well virtually nothing which is incredible. So these are nicely balanced at the moment, obviously there's no real load on them so you can see all the uh, individual uh, cell voltages there. Um, you can see it's gone through 186 cycles, so that's uh, cycles where it's been recorded as uh, going low enough as well. And then we have the current temperature on the temperature centre, which I plugged back in earlier, which is 24 degrees C. So uh, that looks like it's on and uh, ready to use. Last thing to do is just to check the voltage at the terminals, just to make sure that everything is switched on from a BMS perspective. And there you have it, uh, 26.7 volts. So I've tidied up the uh, cables now after the reassembly of the battery. So all the uh, balance leads are a bit better now. I've got some removable cable ties in there. Uh, some there as well, just to keep things neat and tidy on the inside. So the uh, Bluetooth module, which the lead goes out there, I've just hang out the side because it gives a little bit better coverage on the mobile. So I'll put a cover over the batteries and then the lid on and then we're done. So what you may have noticed as I was giving you the tour inside this cart battery was the fact that there's a Victron smart shunt. Now the reason I got that was because the Dali smart BMS, the accuracy on the state of charge wasn't that good. So what I wanted to do was get this and try it out because I haven't got one of these Victron smart shunts anywhere else, just to see how accurate it was and also give me more detailed history of how the battery's used. So what I did was I actually got an old Fire 7 tablet as you can see here from Amazon and I managed to put the Google Play Store on there so I can actually install the Victron app. So this gives me the ability, to, as you can see at the moment, to get all the details on screen without having to keep dipping into my mobile. And the other thing I've done with this as well is I've actually attached it to the lid. So not only does the lid come off if I want to, but I can actually use this pretty much anywhere else within range. Obviously I need to charge it as well, which I'm working on. And I've got another little, um, if you like, a charger thing, like you get in a car, which I'm gonna be adding to this very soon. Sorry, just interrupting myself. So this is the uh, charger in question. So I can actually run it from here and actually keep the uh, Fire 7 tablet charged nicely. And all I need to do is just connect these inside the box 
and then make a hole and then just fit this on the outside. And it also has a voltage uh, setting as well, display when that's plugged in. So I can continue to charge this all the time without requiring an external power source. But that's the reason I got this and it's actually proved really useful indeed. So that's a quick reason why I got the Victron Smart Shunt. So very much the supporting act for this battery has been my MPP solar inverter and my solar panels in the garden. So the MPP solar inverter is the 24 volt version as you would expect. And that has a three kilowatt AC output. So pretty much like running anything off of a single main socket. And I've got four 340 watt panels in the garden, giving me about 1360 watts of solar available. Right time to see what it's done to my grid energy usage, as in the electricity that I use. And this came online again in mid-Feb 2022. So you can already see a big change in 2022 being the green line on screen at the moment. Uh, the winter wasn't great in terms of clouds, so not as much as I was hoping for. But as you can see for the other line for 2023, which goes up to May, the improvements continue. And uh, May is already down to just 44 kilowatt hours used, which is fantastic. And my readings are taken on the 29th of every month to keep them consistent. Obviously, I can't do that with Feb, so it's always 28th and then 29th on a leap year. So this isn't just a five kilowatt hour battery in its own right. Obviously, I have the secondary system, which if you've seen other videos on this channel, you'll know. And that's connected up at the moment to an AC200P with about 500 watts attached. So again, this is not solely the five kilowatt hour battery, but you can see the difference it's made because I did have another battery I was using, which was the EB150 prior to when I brought it online in 2022. So you can see the stark difference that that five kilowatt hour battery has made. So the other thing that this five kilowatt hour setup has done for me is enabled me to cook a lot more without using gas. So that's actually helped to bring down my gas bills a little bit, although it still can't cover my heating, but it has had a really positive impact because I've got so much more to use. So the other thing that it's enabled me to do during the summer months really, and when I've got an excess of solar, as in when the battery is full up pretty much by mid to late morning, I can actually run my crypto mining rig, which is only a single GPU setup. And I'll just put that on screen now for you to have a look at. So that actually enables me just to bring a few pence in per day to try and offset some of those extra kilowatt hours I've used off the grid. So I'm not completely uh, cost negative on the whole thing, but it's almost there on some days. So there you have it, a five kilowatt hour DIY battery that's made a real difference to the way I run my home. So I've done 12, I've done 24 volts, so I'm gonna move on to 48 volt. So stay tuned for more of those builds coming up. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, please pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Da Vinci.